Hi, everybody. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, we're going to hand off uh, this web meeting to Trey Hearn. Trey Hearn is uh, going to be our presenter. Uh, thanks, everyone, for uh, joining us this morning or this afternoon, depending on where you're at. Um, today's presentation is about uh, the criminal justice system and its impact on the Black community. And we'll also talk about uh, some solutions. Dave, if we can go to the first slide. Can you all see that? Can, so, you, can you see the presentation? Yes. I yeah. can. You should make it full screen. I think there should be an option. Looks good. I believe there is a full screen version somewhere, but I don't know why I can't do it. Oh, this is this is good. Okay, it looks it? good to me. Thanks, guys. Okay. Uh, so this summer, uh, over the last, I would say for the last five, seven years here in Minnesota, the police accountability movement in the city of St. Paul and across Minnesota has really uh, heated up. Uh, we can go to the next slide too. So here in St. Paul, for about 20 years or so, or more, there were never really protests in St. Paul because of some political reasons uh, that had happened. So a lot of things would happen behind closed doors. In 2015, uh, Marcus Golden was murdered by the St. Paul Police Department, and that started the Black Lives Matter movement. Well, not the first Black Lives Matter protest here in Minnesota, but one of the first protests here, Martin was killed by George Zimmerman uh, when he was on his way from, from the store from grabbing some Skittles, and that is what prompted the Black Lives Matter movement in the United States. George Zimmerman was not even a police officer, but he was still acquitted uh, for, for um, or, or was not sent to prison for murdering Trayvon Martin. Trayvon Martin was unarmed um, and was just walking home from the, from the store. He had a hoodie on and he was a youth, a lot of people. Um, so a lot of this presentation will also center on what's happening with the youth and how they're impacted by the criminal justice system um, at an early age and how it traumatizes them also. So uh, Trayvon was uh, still a young child uh, had a had his whole life ahead of him, and it was taken away from him from him for nothing, and no one was ever punished for it. Okay, if we can go to the next, then by two two p.m., there was a there was uh, they said there was a gun found at the scene. So this is when we started talking about uh, yeah oh yes been right. Right at the end of the presentation, uh, we can we can ask those questions. But as you're saying that that question with this situation, there was a, a grand jury involved in in this situation also. Um, so Marcus Golden, he was uh, murdered by the St. Paul Police Department outside of a. They said that he had a gun, but uh, we know that he didn't have a gun. Well, we well what we were told by witnesses is that the police officers slipped on some ice and started firing their weapons. So they were going to say that he tried to run them over, but that's uh, not really what we believe has happened. So his aunt is named Monique Colors Dotty, and she is the founder of the Black Lives Matter Minnesota chapter. Uh, that we work with here in Minnesota. Marcus Golden's mother was also a volunteer police officer. 
So she would volunteer at the state fair every year for about 20 years. And um, so I know some of you might've heard about a chant like pigs in a blanket or something. So we did a, because his mother was volunteering at the state fair uh, for so many years and was killed by the people that she was volunteering for, we decided to start having annual marches at the state fair. Uh, and the first one that, that we did was, was pretty massive and it was trending uh, on Twitter and things like that. Before the murder of Marcus Golden in the city of St. Paul, like I was saying earlier, there were never protests like this here because of some agreements certain black organizations had with the St. Paul Police Department. Um, after decided that we were able to do that, but we know that we have to continue to keep pushing. Some of the statistics with Metro Transit, uh, black people would always get harassed for, um, like they will come on and check people's fares. And a lot of times um, they will walk right past white people and go straight to black people. Or even more, the Native Americans would be uh, taken off the train at the highest rate more than anybody in the state of Minnesota. Um, if we can go to the next slide. So um, this summer, well, in, in for 2020, we heard that uh, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. We would hear chants of I can't breathe because of what happened to George Floyd. But a few years earlier, uh, the first time where we heard I can't breathe at this intensity, I'm not saying Eric Garner is the first person to say that. I can't breathe because I've been pepper sprayed be before myself and I couldn't breathe either. And, um, or with tear gas and things like that. But this happened on national TV. We, this was also uh, seen on national TV where uh, Eric Garner had the life um, choked out of him by a New York police officer. And in many of these cases too, these, this is not these uh, officers first time uh, murdering or killing somebody. This officer uh, had had has done this before to people and there were many complaints similar to Derek Chauvin and Derek Chauvin had uh, choked children before, like a 14 year old ch child before he had even um, murdered George Floyd, but the officer who killed or murdered Eric, Eric Gotten, and we uh, every year they would have a big marathon here. And we, um, Walter Wallace, yes. When he, we uh, shut down uh, the, the uh, marathon, we called it Black Marathon and we shut down the marathon. But what stuck out to me was that his children were very young and they understood everything that was happening at that time. Um, if we can go to the next slide. Oh, we can go to the next one too. So when we talk about police brutality, we're not just talking about what's happening in um, with the police, or we talk about criminal justice and black bodies. We're not just talking about police brutality. It also happens inside jails and prisons. And uh, Sandra Bland was an activist. She was very outspoken and she was pulled over by the police. And um, when she was in custody, she, uh, she was found, she died. And a lot of people feel that she was killed because she was a very outspoken uh, person. So police brutality isn't just affecting black men, it's also starting to affect uh, black women like Sandra Bland, uh, Corinne Gaines, and Charlena Lyles, like I just mentioned, and also uh, Breonna Taylor. Uh, we can go to the next slide. So the Green Party uh, Black Caucus and our National Green Party and our media committee was involved early on, found uh, dead and dead in there, uh, hanging hanging in there. So there was a, a lot of issues around Beltrami County Jail and some of their practices and procedures. If we could play the clip and then I can explain a little more.
Can you guys hear it? No. Is there something where the volume needs to turn up or? Well, so basically is um, what's happening here is this is Katie Wright uh, with the sunglasses on and then Delshia Perry is in the middle. That's Hardell's um, mother. And then this is a nurse who has the microphone. And she, she was the whistleblowing nurse who told what she seen happen with Dr. Leonard, who we call uh, AKA Dr. Death. Dr. Leonard is the uh, owner of Men Correctional Facility and Men Correctional Facility offers healthcare to inmates in jails inside in Minnesota uh, jails. Uh, he's also inside uh, Iowa and I think uh, North Dakota. Um, so right now, just last week, like, uh, well, there's a hearing about whether he's going to be able to uh, continue to practice medicine earlier this week. Um, but he he's a uh, main correctional. So what's the uh, luckily, there was a young woman there named Darnella Frazier over a $20 bill. Exactly. And the, and the thing about that's so disappointing about this is that George Floyd comes from a family that uh, had 500 acres. His grandpa had basically brought itself out of slavery, then uh, acquired 500 acres of land, and then that land was stolen from him. So if we, if George, we, think if that didn't happen, George Floyd wouldn't have even been in Minnesota and wouldn't have died over $20. Uh, a, a lot of land was stolen from black people or black people lost a lot of land throughout the years uh, through different means and that impacts our generational wealth. And uh, if we can go to the next slide. So this is um, some new body, well, it was not new, but it was body cam footage that was released. I didn't want to show the actual knee being on his neck because I know we've seen, we've all seen that and this has been uh, very traumatizing, but um, if we can play this clip and then we'll talk about it some more. I don't know what's wrong with the volume, but in this clip, uh, he's actually already saying he can't breathe. He's claustrophobic. Flow, he's claustrophobic. Uh, he's letting the officer know that he's not a bad person and that he's just he's having problems breathing. And so the police are forcing him inside. Are starting to force him inside the car. And then this is what, uh, after this, they pull him outside the car. And then that's when Derek Chauvin arrives and puts his knee on his on George Floyd's neck for close to 10 minutes. Uh, so this incident was uh, right in, in, in broad daylight. There were community members there. There were children there. Uh, there were several children there. And some of those children live streamed what happened. And uh, the whole nation got to see what happened. And then this led to civil unrest here in Minnesota and throughout the country and some of the uh, biggest protests in American history. Uh, we, can, we can go to the, to the next slide. So as a result of that, uh, she said she thought her her gun was her taser, but she's been on the force for at least, she's been on the force longer than Dante Wright has been alive. And um, it was just a really, really horrible situation. But this also too caused a lot of outrage and um, some civil unrest in Brooklyn Center. And Brooklyn Center is like a suburb of Minneapolis. So for this, and she, I would say uh, Kobe Heisler was also killed 
in Brooklyn by the Brooklyn Center Police Department. He was having a mental health crisis. Uh, I think he was also autistic and he was murdered by the Brooklyn Center Police Department too in his driveway. Uh, but Dante Wright was unarmed and he was uh, pulled over and, and murdered. Uh, we, we can go to the next clip. And, but again, I also want to, before we, before we play this, I, just with George Floyd, I just want to, um, no, we can go ahead. We can go ahead. What happened to our sound? So in this clip, it's going to actually show um, what happened to Dante Wright uh, during during that traffic stop. And uh, this is what we talk about. We talk about driving while black. And this is uh, Dante Wright's car. And if we 